Okay, so this is a quick demo of the cold lateral obturation technique that we're going to be using in preclinic and in the clinic. So I've instrumented this plastic block with our step back technique. Um, I, my MAF is a 30 and my corrected working length on this block is 16. So the first thing I'm going to do before obturating or sealing the tooth is to make sure I have a good seat. Uh, by placing my MAF file, my 30 file, at my corrected working length, which is 16, and making sure that it seats to length easily and that it doesn't move apically with light apical pressure, and that feels good here. I'm also going to verify that I've created adequate taper by placing a finger spreader in the canal and ensuring that it can go within one millimeter of my corrected working length. So on this too, since my corrected working length is 16, I'm going to make sure that my spreader goes to at least 15 millimeters and it goes there easily. So I have a good taper in my canal and I'm going to be able to create an adequate seal in the apical portion of the canal. In this tooth, since, or in this canal, since it's a um, pretty average size canal, I'm going to use the medium fine spreader. It says MF or it's red on the handle. Um, there's also a, a fine spreader that you might see. It's blue. It's a little bit larger and it has an F on the handle. So that you would use in a larger canal um, for your obturation technique and for checking the taper. So once I'm ready uh, as far as my taper and my seat I'm going to take my MAF file shot if that looks good radiographically then I'm ready to move on with obturation um, once we're ready to obturate before we obturate as we talked about in lecture we'll do a final rinse with sodium hypochlorite EDTA um, to remove the smear layer and then we'll dry the canal with paper points these are medium paper points. They come in different sizes, fine, medium, coarse. Um, in most canals, medium are, are good. Um, we can always measure our paper points so that they're not going to be pushed beyond the apex and possibly create apical inflammation. So I'm going to measure them at my working length, which is 16 again, and just dry out the canal of any moisture so that I create a good seal. And usually we'll use a few to dry out at the end of cleaning and shaping before we obturate. Okay, so everything's good and dry here now. Uh, so the next thing that I'm going to do, I'll do a cone fit in the canal to ensure that my master cone is going to fit to my length. Now your master cone is the largest cone that you're going to use during the cold lateral obturation technique and the size of the cone will correlate to the size of your master apical file. So since I had a master apical file of 30, I'm going to use a cone or a master cone of 30 as well. So I'm going to grab out my 30 cone here. And these, these cones don't come sterile in the pack, so when you're going to use them you can um, sterilize them as well by placing them in a cup of sodium hypochlorite for about a minute. But since we're using a plastic block here right now, we'll just go ahead and use it non-sterile. So I'm going to measure this, this cone to my corrected working length, which is 16 millimeters, and I'm going to grab it at that length. You can, usually what I'll do, which seems to work pretty well, is just pinch the head of the cotton pliers against the gutta percha. It's kind of a softer material, so I'm kind of making an indent in it at that length. So even when I take my cotton pliers off of it, I'll still have my, re my measurement referenced on my gutta percha point. So I'm going to place the gutta percha point in the canal and make sure that it fits to length. And I can see kind of that reference point that I made on the gutta percha, the kind of indent there, that that's sitting at my length. And then in a clinical situation or on our extracted mounted teeth, at this point we'll take a radiograph uh, to ensure that our cone is seating where we want it to radiographically. If we need to make any changes, then 
if they're a millimeter or more or we have to change the size then we'll have to take a new radiograph to verify but in my block this this cone is looking really good so once we're happy with our cone fit what we'll do is we'll get sealer on our on our master point and you just kind of coat the cone in sealer and we'll place it in the canal again ensuring that it goes to length and you can kind of gently pump it up and down to coat the walls with sealer okay so that's seating our master cone so now that I have my master cone seated with sealer I'm going to use my medium fine spreader to create space along that master cone so I can place an accessory cone and fill this canal, canal laterally uh, with, with accessory points so that we get a seal in three dimensions. So in order to create a good seal in the apical third of the canal, um, I'm going to measure my spreader to two, within two millimeters of my corrected working length. So for this canal, since our corrected working length was 16, I'm going to measure my spreader to 14 and then I'm going to place it into the canal and make sure it goes at least to 14 millimeters with light apical pressure. And I'm just putting about the same amount of pressure as you would to when you condense your um, amalgam restoration. So not a ton of apical pressure, but, but some so that you can work it down alongside the cone. So now that I have my spreader down to within two millimeters of my corrected working length, I'm going to get an accessory point ready to fill that space that I'm creating with my spreader so that we're sealing the canal laterally. And since I'm using a medium fine spreader, I'm going to use medium fine accessory points. These guys come in a bunch of different sizes. It's usually best to use the size that corresponds to your spreader size so that you're filling the space that the spreader has, has created. So. I'll grab one of my medium fine points, and again these don't come sterile, so you can sterilize them um, in sodium hypochlorite as well. I'm going to measure this to 14 millimeters because that's where my spreader went to. I'm going to coat my spreader or my, my or my accessory point with my sealer, and again I'm kind of indexing this cone at that point so that I can even if my um, cotton pliers come off or I, I take them off that I have that measurement index on there. So in kind of one quick movement I'm going to try to remove my spreader and place my point um, pretty immediately so that that space that the spreader has created uh, doesn't fill up once I take it out. If I take this spreader out and just let it sit before I put my accessory point in that, that space is going to close off and I'm not going to get my cone to length. So I'm going to take this spreader, I'm going to wiggle it out and I'm going to place my cone directly into that space that my spreader came out of. And I can see with my index points here that, that it, my accessory point went to length. It went all the way to the length that my spreader went to. And that means it's filling that space that I created. If it didn't go to length, if it stopped short, you wouldn't want to leave it in there. You'd want to take it out and redo it. So put your spreader back in, measure another point, and, and place it and ensure it goes to length. Because if you don't get your cones to the length that your spreader went to, then you're leaving spaces or potential voids, and those are areas um, within the canal space that aren't sealed. So we want to make sure everything's sealed within the canal. So now I have my first accessory point in, I'm going to get ready to place another one. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to place my spreader back in alongside my points, kind of in the same area as I was before so if you're going from the mesial you want to kind of always go from the mesial or or if you're going from the distal same thing you want to kind of always go from the same area so you're kind of pushing all the cones in in one direction as you go so now I'm going to put my medium fine spreader back in there and I'm going to use some gentle apical pressure to work it down alongside those cones and I'm going to move the stopper to my reference point um, so I can measure now how far my spreader is going down to. I'm going to take it out and I'll measure it here that we're going to 13 millimeters now. So I'm going to place it back in the canal just to hold that spot so that spot doesn't close up and I'm going to measure another accessory point, a medium fine one, 
to go to 13 millimeters to fill that new space that we've created. And again, I'll index it, get some of our sealer on there. And then again, quickly, I'm going to take this spreader out and I'm going to place my cone in. And at this time, this cone isn't quite going to my length. You can see if I take this off, my index point isn't reaching my length there. So I'm not going to leave that in. I probably have a void there where that index or where my cone wasn't going to length. So I'm going to pull that guy out just by the tail and we'll make some more. We'll go back in with our spreader and ensure that we're making enough space for that cone. Okay, so I have my spreader back in and I'm just making sure I have enough space alongside those cones. I'm going to get another master or accessory point ready and measure that to my length that my spreader is going to, 13 millimeters. Put a little index on it. Get some sealer ready to go. And then I will take out my spreader again and I'll place my accessory point right in that space. And now it's going where I want it. Okay. So we'll go along in this fashion again, placing our spreader in as um, far apically as it will go with light apical pressure, moving our stopper down to our reference point, measuring it at the length that, that we got to, so 11 millimeters this time, holding that space while I get another accessory point ready. And again, I'll grab another medium fine accessory point. Measure this guy at my length, 11 millimeters. Index it. Get some sealer on it. And then I will pull out my spreader and place my cone right in that spot. So I'm going to continue again placing my spreader in alongside my cones and measuring my spreader. I'm going to 11, placing it back in the canal to hold the spot and measuring an accessory point at that length. taking out my spreader and placing my cone immediately in. And again, this one didn't quite go to length, so I'm going to go back a little bit with my spreader, make sure I've created enough room. Take my spreader out and place my cone. And there we go. So, with a with it, your canals, you're going to work until your your spreader won't go beyond the coronal third of the canal. Um, so in most teeth, that'll be um, you know where your spreader won't get beyond like 10 to to 12 millimeters. So um, and and usually it's about four or five accessory points, but in larger canals, um, you can have you can have several more. So. Um, basically, again, you want it so you can't get your spreader beyond the coronal third, and then you're you're likely sealed um, apically and coronally. So at this point, if we're happy as far as the depth of our spreader penetration and the amount of accessory points we have in the canal, clinically or on our extracted mounted teeth, we're going to take that peacock shot or the pre-sear shot. Um, and what we're looking for here on our radiograph would be to make sure that our obturation is to the length, our, our corrected working length, and that we have adequate um, density of obturation so there's not, um, it doesn't look like it's not filling the space of the canal. 
um, and we're looking for there to be no voids or spaces between the gutta percha. So if that all looks good, then we'd be ready to do our sear off. Um, we'll, to do our sear off, we're going to use a heated instrument. In the lab, we'll use a um, Bunsen burner and a heated plugger. In clinic, you're going to use a System B, which is an electronically heated plugger. Um, but either way, what you want to do is to sear off the gutta percha at the level of the orifice or at the level of the CEJ or one millimeter below. Um, and this will remove enough gutta percha so that you have adequate space for your restorative material. And it, in an anterior tooth, it's important to remove it at or below the CEJ so that you don't have um, gutta percha and sealer in the chamber, which could potentially lead to staining of the tooth. So I'm going to use my heated instrument to sear off my gutta percha at the level of the orifice. I'm just kind of making this circular motion with my heated instrument. And some of the tails will come out with me. And I might have to go in again. You can use a 2 by 2 to kind of wipe off your heated instrument. So now we're seared off, we'll use a plugger. You have two different pluggers in your kit. Um, they're, one's larger and one's smaller. They both have two ends. These we're going to use to, uh, in the coronal aspect to compact the gutta percha coronally. And then you can also use either a micro brush or a cotton pellet. Um, with some alcohol on it to clean out off the sealer, clean that out of the chamber as well. This one doesn't have alcohol on it, but I can get it on here now. This is just an alcohol pad to kind of moisten that micro brush, and that's cleaning out the sealer as well. So that is our cold lateral compaction. One of the good things is with this technique is if we're not happy with our obturation at that pre-sear shot, we could have pulled out our pulled out our cones with the tails and, and started over until we were happy with the obturation. So it's a good technique to be able to um, improve upon before the final um, result if, if there's issues with it. So at this point, with our sear off complete and our sealer cleaned out, we'd be good to go ahead and put in our coronal restoration either or either permanent or temporary and take our post-operative images. So that is cold lateral compaction.